I'm Jonas Koto and you are watching Southeast Red Metal. Ho 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 ho. Well, we are here uh, in Finland with Jonas Koto, the Finnish Aixman who has been playing with many Finnish bands. Welcome to our show, Jonas. Thank you. Uh, tell us all first the short history of your musical background. I pretty much started my first real band somewhere around the early 90s. And then the usual garage stuff, few local shows. Then formed Malpractice in 94. After that, 99 to die for tours in Europe, Mexico, Russia, four albums. Then in the late 2000s, I joined Omnium Gatherum, toured for a decade with them and quit a little bit a year ago. And now doing stuff on my own at the moment. And the stuff you mentioned is the reason why we are here. So you are going to release the new album, solo album. It's coming out on 5th of March 2021 and it's called Yuroshima. Uh, let's talk about the actual album Yuroshima. Uh, why did you decide to put out a solo album? Why now? Is there some particular reason for it? Uh, it was after I quit uh, Omnium Gatherum, I really wanted to focus on an album I have always wanted to do. And I did a lot of demos and different kind of music and it kind of crystallized to me that it's gonna be an old school Bay Area thrash metal album with a kind of a finished twist to it, uh, which means uh, adding Stone into the equation, which is one of my all time favorite bands. and. Uh, I don't know. I think it was the best time now because I had some time off from the road. I had charged my batteries and wasn't a good place within my head to do so, do such an album. So that's why now. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, recharging your batteries. Uh, in a recent newspaper interview, you told that nature is important thing to you. Is nature the place? where you recharge your batteries and get maybe ideas for the songs or, or guitar melodies or stuff like that? Uh, not so much for the songs, but uh, for my mental health. It's very important for me to go fishing. That's my main hobby outside of music. Um, fishing, walking in the forest and just observing nature in total silence and listening to the woods and stuff like that. It's as when you get older it becomes more and more important you don't want to go to the bars and drink beer all night long and you'd rather go to a I don't know summer cabin or to a nature reserve and go hiking fishing camping and that's the best way for me to recharge and maybe when you do that enough then you are you know your your brain is ready to compose and write new music and lyrics and stuff like that yes you kind of clean the slate you can you can begin from a clean table so to speak and the writing method for me usually goes uh, i just sit on my couch with my guitar and i start noodling playing some riffs or just watching tv and noodling around and suddenly i realize ah this riff sounds pretty good and then i stop watching tv and go to my computer and record the riff and suddenly I realized there's one before that, there's one after that and then I'm already doing a guitar harmonies to that and suddenly there's a whole song. It, sometimes it takes weeks to finish a song and sometimes hours. And sometimes they never get finished. <laughs> That's when you know that you gotta toss them. So, so those those riffs which are not never finished, they maybe end to the B side at some point. Yeah, um, or not even that. <laughs> Maybe if you don't, uh, my rule of thumb has been that if you don't remember the riff the day after you have written it, it then it pr probably wasn't good enough. So if I don't have the time or means to record or um, somewhere, for example, my summer cabin or something, I don't have my phone and stuff with me and I come up with a riff and if I still remember it the next day, then it's got to be good. I don't know how many riffs I've lost <laughs> during the years I've been doing this, but 
I guess hundreds. Uh, you you told uh, that you're sitting on a couch and playing guitar, and then when you find a, a riff that you think that you can use, like for Hiroshima album, do you tape it on your mobile phone or do you just tape it firstly on on some kind of recording platform on your computer or stuff like that? Yeah, just just to click away to open my Cubase and start a new project, just to, to put down stuff there, just rough versions of yeah. things. It's easy to know how to record. It's just a button away. Yeah. I can just plug in my guitar to the interface and go. Yeah. You you mentioned the um, the album direction, the Bay Area trash metal with Finnish twist, and you mentioned Stone, there, the legendary Finnish metal band. Uh, is there some you know straight you know lines that you can when when you listen to the album, you you can say that well this sounds like Stone, but it's not Stone. Yeah, there's lots of that going on, especially in the guitar harmonies, how I layer the harmonies. Uh, they're kind of like Stone, but also like Pekka Pohjola, Finnish, famous Finnish, Finnish composer. And uh, there's, for example, a song called The Stands, which is kind of my tribute to Stone. It's It could be one of their lost songs <laughs> from the early 90s. And you can check it out if you like Stone and you'll probably gonna like my album as well so there you go all the stone fans go get the new album when it's out uh let's talk about the lyrics uh, after you you play the riffs and stuff like that are you doing lyrics next or is there going to be the the whole song yeah i usually do a kind of a rough arrangement of a song um, usually it stays that way sometimes i can move some blocks here and there and and usually it's a finished song when I start writing the melodies and the lyrics. And on this album, I guess the lyrics vary a lot within the category of what's wrong with this world. Uh, so there's all your typical heavy metal cliches about environment, religion, war, violence, nightmares, <laughs> submission, <laughs> stuff like that. Your usual heavy metal ABC of lyrics, but mostly they're written in the first person perspective yeah. uh, especially this song called justice after all which is from the perspective of an of an assassin looking through the scope at a certain orange haired orange faced dude not mentioning any names and freeing the world from him mentioned about the topics of the songs and they're related to the world and where it stays now so is there a possibility that there's a concept with which binds the songs together in this album uh, not uh, kind of kind of loose concept which binds the album uh, but there are individual stories nonetheless and they are written during uh, I don't know a year or so and usually starts from scratch. When I finish the demo version of the song, I just take my pen and paper, not to the computer, pen and paper always, and start writing something and usually come with a rhythm for the singing, for the vocal melodies, come up with the rhythm and then start writing lines according to that. And uh, not a concept album in that sense of the meaning. So, uh, let's talk about actual recording. Uh, you play the guitar on the album, but do you have any, any you know, guest musicians, your friends or, or 
pals from your earlier bands playing on on this album or do you play all the instruments yourself yeah this is the most solo album you can get uh, i wrote the songs the music the lyrics i played guitars bass i sang all the vocals i programmed the drums on this one um, i recorded mixed mastered um, then I did artwork for the album, I'm doing all the videos, uh, I'm doing distribution, and I'm doing pretty much everything on this album, so it's a real solo album. I had an original idea to invite a few friends. Um, I had a few guys from all over the world to participate, but there was always some kind of a schedule that didn't happen. I got to ask this one because you've done, like you said, all, all you have done everything yourself. Uh, how difficult it is to be critical towards your own work, which you, you have been playing, and then you think first that ah, this sounds good, but then when you take a few minutes break and listen to it again, it may not sound so good. And you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. But it's hard to be your own producer if that's that's what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, and. It's hard and it's kind of a blessing uh, to, okay, it's cool that you can record yourself, but it's difficult you have to play and press the play button at the same time and listen to the take if it's adequate or not. And you can't do that while you're playing, you either feel it or you don't. And then you just put the guitar aside and then t listen to the take. And it takes double the time than with the real producer than on outside ears, so to say. But uh, on the other hand, I had all the time in the world, uh, locked down everything. You can't go anywhere just sitting here and playing guitar all day long. And so why not make an album while you're at it? Yeah. And it's, you have to have a certain amount of uh, self-restraint. You, you don't let anything pass if it's not good enough. Yeah. And sometimes you're too harsh on yourself uh, as well. Uh, but. It's just how it goes. Yeah. You have to find the balance on, on that work when you record and, and produce and play all the stuff. <laughs> yeah, pretty much so. It would help a lot if to be some kind of a schizophrenic <laughs> dude who can all be the Jekyll and the Hyde at the same time. And, yeah. uh, but it was pretty easy recording for me to don't not to ha first time ever not to have a deadline on an album i didn't even know that it's one of, it's gonna be an album until i had the last song recorded i started thinking that now oh, this this is good enough to put out as an album i just made it for my own fun to begin with so it's it just turned out to be an album it's just learning learning all the time while you're doing it there's a kind of a learning curve to the recording and mixing and all these studio things and I've done studio stuff before. I've worked at uh, Astia Studio. I've recorded, uh, produced some Russian bands and recorded guitars for the last Norther album, for example, and and done all pretty much recording for the last Malpractice album and recorded some Omnium Gatherum stuff in the studio, doing an engineering stuff there as well. So it was not new to me. Yeah. Well. Uh, I guess the environment was also, you know, it was familiar to you because if I got it right, you did everything here where we're sitting in your living room. Yeah, pretty much so. <laughs> pretty much so. It's problematic to do the vocal or something, just, just shouting and barking here, but it's, you can do it when you're home alone, when your wife's not home. <laughs> then you can shout all you want. <laughs> when wife's come, wife comes home, it's her who does the shouting there. Let's talk about the future plans. Like you said that the album, it's just, you know, it came out. You suddenly noticed that you have material enough and you've 
recorded songs enough to put out an album. Are you having plans to do more albums like this all by yourself? Or are you planning maybe a tour after this COVID stuff is over and people can go on gigs and bands can do touring again? Uh, I really don't see myself touring with this project. Uh, it would mean that I would have to learn to play the guitar and sing at the same time, which is, uh, I have the highest respect for people like uh, Adrian Bilou from King Crimson and Antti Hyrynen from Stamina, who can play such intricate music and sing at the same time. I, I could never do that. I can do some backing vocals and stuff like that, and that's it. And I still don't have a yearning to be on the road. I've been two years away from touring album, touring album cycle and still don't feel the need to go back on the road. I, I would like to see bands more than play live. And but, but the future, I have another project going on which is kind of like 70s heavy rock called The Boogie Mooses and we're releasing our 7-inch single next week which is February 17th from this moment. And uh, we're playing some local shows with them and um, probably making um, full-length vinyl, no CDs, with that band. Totally analog, totally vinyl stuff. It's a 70s, kind of like Black Sabbath and Thin Lizzy and stuff like that. And probably gonna activate myself to try to write a new album for Malpractice. Uh, I've been doing that for years now, but uh, I just keep tossing those <laughs> songs away because I don't find them good enough because the albums are so good what we have done I don't want to do a worse album than those it wouldn't be fair to the band which is which has been with me since 94 and uh, probably I'm gonna do another one of these Kotok albums if I get the stuff going I'm not, I didn't have plans to release this either, so who knows, maybe within a year I have another album out, so... I'm constantly writing, constantly playing guitar, so stuff just comes out. Let's see where it goes. Well, we see what happens. Uh, we have a... Superfan! Fan, superfan from, from High Lake of Finland. I don't even know where it is, but he keeps sending strange questions to all of our uh, guests and uh, he has been bombing us with questions to you so uh, he he writes like this uh, your technique is so amazing how do you maintain it on a weekly basis any tips for training I don't have a training schedule to so to speak uh, I just play and play and play and play uh, sometimes I play five days a week, a few hours a day, and sometimes I don't play at all. And it's pretty much like riding the bike. Once you get to a certain point, it doesn't take that much maintenance to keep it up. Uh, if you take a longer break from the technique re rehearsals, uh, then you, it takes an hour more to get back to shape. But it's I don't see how anyone could kind of lose the technique they have gained already so there you go super fan from high lake and he has another question too uh, i don't know if he if it's he or she but uh, i decided it's he but uh he writes the second one is uh, jackson is clearly your uh, your cup of coffee but what's your relationship with other guitar brands i'm very open to other guitar brands for example on my left there's one tokai which I use for the 70s stuff, which is a Les Paul thing. And I've had Gibsons, Fenders, Sarvels. Uh, and, but Jackson is just my weapon of choice uh, because I've been playing those, especially Randy Rhodes models, I've been playing them since 1990. And there's my crown jewel there, <laughs> right over there. and. My dad brought it from Miami in 1990, and that's been with me since, and I'm never going to give that up. I've sold so many guitars during the years and been <laughs> have regretted selling them, but that one, I'm it's never going to let let it go. So, 
Jackson is for me it's just I guess the scale it fits my short fingers so well <laughs> and I'm, I'm just so used to it I guess it's pretty much it and then quality instruments Jonas, thanks for having us here. Uh, album is coming out March 5th, 2021, and you have a social media sites and there are instructions for the fans how to pre-order the album. And it's coming also on the uh, playlist uh, of like, you know, Spotify or something like that, if I got it right. Is it coming up? Yeah, it's going to be released on every major digital platform. like. Um, iTunes and Spotify and Google Play and YouTube Music and you name it. Um, the pre-order on the digital platforms begin on February 12th and the release is actually being pre-laid to 26th of uh, February, both on the CD and the uh, digital release. But all the fans, if you like Bay Area Trash Metal with Finnish Twist, Kotok Yuroshima is the album to pre-order. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jonas. Stay heavy and see you next time when you have more new music. Thank you. See you next time. Olisahan meillä yksi kysymys tähän loppuun vielä, että olisiko sinulla jotain muuta sanottavaa? Hehehehe, <tos> vittu,